That's a little different than making a specific allegation about a specific individual on this particular committee. Uh, the chair, the the, if I could, to the gentleman from Maryland, the chair has been very lenient in things being said. Previous speaker from the Democrats called the former president of the United States all kinds of things. And we sat here and let it go. Probably should have said something then. Maybe everyone should be careful about what they say. Um, and the gentleman from Maryland is recognized for his five minutes of uh, question, but, and we but, have to move fast. Before we get to that, Mr. Chairman, those rules don't cover, the rules that govern this committee don't cover statements about I'm talking about decorum in, I'm they just talking cover, about general decorum. They, they, they do cover statements about members of the committee and members of the House. And I've admonished, the I've admonished the gentleman, he should watch what he says, just like other members should watch what they say about the former president of our country. The gentleman from Maryland is recognized for five minutes president, of questioning. The former president is not a member of the committee. I, under, and is I, not I know that. not protected by the, the House rules I understand that, that govern these kinds of statements. I understand that. The gentleman is recognized for five minutes to question the witness. Well, Mr. Durham, good afternoon. I uh, appreciate you being here, although I'm sure... As you expressed earlier, there are probably other places you'd rather be. I, I did want to follow up on your prior testimony about um, uh, the trip that you and the attorney, the attorney general Barr took to Italy. Um, and I wanted to ask you uh, about the, to elaborate on that. Um, is it, I, I take it that was at the point prior to you becoming special counsel, but not by much, is that right? Um, it was uh, prior to that. I think I think it was um, a while before. Um, the the dates I've got, just to help out, August 15th and September 27th, 2019. Does that yeah. sound about right? Yeah, and I was appointed special counsel in October of 2020, so uh, more than a year before that. Okay, and why did you go on that trip? You know, I want to be careful as to what I'm authorized to, sure. to say here, speaking outside um, the report, but I think uh, members probably aware of the fact that there was a particular person who supposedly had provided or had made statements to Papadopoulos. And Papadopoulos, not when he talked to the Australians, but when he was interviewed by the FBI, attributed information he had to this particular person who was a European. Um, there was reason to believe that that person was in Italy or had been in Italy. All right. And, 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 and let me ask, just to follow up on that, why, why did the Attorney General come with you to investigate that? Is, it is, this is my understanding, and I mean, these weren't communications I had, but the Italian authorities wanted to deal with a person at appropriate level, not with me. And so that's what that was about. It, that's my understanding. All right. But was it unusual for the Attorney General of the United States to uh, go on trips to uh, interview witnesses, whether overseas or even domestically? Yeah, he didn't, um, to my knowledge, uh, the Attorney General didn't interview any witnesses. His, he, what he was, my understanding was that in uh, accordance with what the Italian authorities wanted, he was going to go over, did go over, and um, introduce me uh, to them so that they would work with us to see if they could be of assistance in our locating a particular witness. All right, so he, he personally traveled to Italy in the pursuit of this uh, investigative lead. In opening the door for our group, to pursue an investigative lead. Yes, All right. Sir. And then you said you'd been at the Department of Justice for 40 years? I have been. All right. Do you recall the Attorney General of the United States ever taking a step like that uh, to travel overseas in pursuit of a lead in an investigation? You know, I, I, I don't know. It may happen all the time. I can only talk by my experience. This is the. Fair enough. Time. Fair enough. Fair enough. And I take it that whatever investigation was done over there in Italy didn't lead to any type of prosecution or investigate. Uh, 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 convict, convictions in, in your investigation. That's correct. All right, I want to yield the remainder of my time to Mr. Schiff. Mr. Durham, did you uh, seek uh, communications pertaining to someone named Mr. Bernard uh, from a federal district judge? I'm not, let's, assuming that um, prosecutors go to judges for certain kinds of orders, they are typically sealed proceedings. I'm not speaking Did you uh, seek to an order to your question, but I'm not going to comment on anything that I believe is under seal. Did you seek uh, a court order to obtain personal communications returning to Mr. Bernard? I'm not going to speak beyond the uh, report on that point, and I'm not going to violate any Were you, uh, sealing orders. I don't think it violates any sealing orders to tell us if you sought personal communications by court order, did you? 
Again, it's beyond well, a report. Well, well, let's not even subject it's it's to a person. Did you seek court orders to obtain particular records, and were you denied by the judge? I think the question is, you know, well, that, intended the to suggest that I, I don't want to disclose what I, something I'm The question is what I asked you, Mr. Durham. Yeah. You get to give the answer, not the question. The question is, did you seek a court order to get records from a judge pertaining to private communications, and were you turned down by the judge for lack of a sufficient basis? Yeah. And I've told you yes that or no. I'm, it's beyond the report. I don't think I'm authorized to talk about it, and I'm not going to violate it's any It's not beyond the orders. report. It's not beyond the report. Do you see anything in the report about that? Uh, yes. Did you seek an order, and were you turned down? I've and then did you seek to go around the court order by going to the grand jury? No. Would you like to know what that was about? What I would like to know, Mr. Durham, is did, did Mrs. Danahy, who resigned from your team, raise ethical concerns about your trying to go around the court order? To my knowledge, no. Then why did she leave? I've told you before, previously, that I have the highest regard for Ms. Danahy. Um, Ms. Danahy and I are friends. Uh, Ms. Danahy, um, like you, you know why she left, right? I, I, I I'm not. You do sure know the answer to the question. You know why she left, right? Yeah. Time the gentleman has expired. The chair now. Uh, recognizes Mr. Mr. Chairman, if I might ask unanimous consent to offer sure. uh, two articles for the record. Uh, the first is uh, by Charlie Savage, Adam Goldman, and Katie Benner. How Barr's quest to find flaws in the un in the Russian inquiry unraveled. Objection. And then the second is Anna Mamigliano. Sorry, Italy did not fuel U.S. suspicion of Russian meddling. Prime Minister says without, both from the New York Times. Without objection, the gentleman from North Carolina is recognized for five minutes. Mr. Durham, I've got a number of things I want to ask you, but do you have a do you desire to address?